second vice president of the Bolivian state, declared herself interim president of the country. But it's not clear if Jenny Añez, as you can see there, an opposition lawmaker, will be able to take that office because she did not get enough votes to become president of the Senate. I believe she needs two thirds. But Añez says she's next in line after three would be successors resign. All of this coming at the same day that former Bolivian President Evo Morales made a complex escape to Mexico, where he credits the Mexican president with saving his life. He is now in exile there. Matt Rivers is standing by live for us in Mexico City. First, though, we want to go to Gustavo Valdez. He's in the Bolivian capital. Gustavo, it's a confusing situation. So let's just walk us through it. Who is in power? What is? What do we know? And what is still uncertain? What we know at this point is that Bolivia has a, an, an interim president, and it is indeed the second vice president of the Senate. What happened today? They tried to have the full session so she could be named the president of the, of the Senate that would immediately allow her to be the president, given the line of succession now that both the president and the vice president are out of the country. However, they did not have enough uh, people in the chamber because the members of the uh, former President Morales party didn't show up. They adjourned that session. Immediately, she went to the, uh, the, the full uh, hall for the vote chambers and declared that based on the Constitution, and she cited the article, she would be the one in line for the presidency, and as such, she was assuming it on a temporary basis until such time as a new president is elected and could take possession in January 22nd. Controversial, you bet. Uh, President Morales, minutes after she was sworn in, or there was no an actual sworn in, she declared her, herself interim president, tweeted that this was the completion of the coup that he's been claiming happened against him. And also, there are thousands of people not far from where we are that have demonstrated all day long against this uh, not only the, the taking of possession of uh, Ms. Janine Agnes, that's her name, but also what they think it's uh, unjust to Mr. Morales. So as of right now, she had the support of two of the most important civic leaders that led this uh, protest nationwide by closing all the streets and closing basically the country. The army has uh, uh, shown her, uh, their support by allowing her to be here. The police had initially, for, for, for many days now, said that they were not in favor of President Morales. Now she would get to uh, name the ministers of the many agencies that have also resigned. So technically we can say that she would be in charge. How this is going to be received, I think it's too early to tell. Uh, let's see first how, what happens tonight and if the citizens remain calm. And now that they've said that all the blockades are going to be lifted, see if the country can return to normal tomorrow, to normalcy tomorrow, or if there are going to be, be people trying to create problems for the new uh, interim president. Yeah, that's going to be the real test, isn't it, Gustavo, the streets tonight. Stay with us, Gustavo. I want to go to Matt Rivers, who's in Mexico City. And Matt, in the last few minutes, we have heard from Evo Morales actually on Twitter. He's been tweeting uh, quite a bit in the last 40 minutes, uh, basically denouncing uh, this coup, saying the senator from the right wing, proclaiming herself president of the Senate, goes against all the legislative rules of the country. It seems to me that he's not giving up quite yet. No, uh, far from it, and, and frankly, it's not a surprise. He said, I mean, when he landed uh, here in Mexico uh, shortly before midday after the Mexican government granted him asylum, they sent a plane down to Bolivia Are you guys to pick back? him up after some initial confusion and a little bit of danger in terms of uh, for that plane, in terms of Peru not allowing that plane to fly through Peruvian airspace. It eventually made its way here, but you know, the president, former president of Bolivia, gets off that plane, meets a throng of reporters that were there to meet him. Uh, and within 30 seconds is talking to reporters basically saying, I'm not going to go quietly into the night here. Uh, I am going to remain active in politics. I'm going to continue to fight what he calls uh, for social justice. Uh, and so the fact that he is now tweeting, uh, which seems to be his preferred and perhaps only method of communication to his supporters back in Bolivia at this point is really no surprise. And I think that's the big question going forward. Yes, Bolivia has an interim president right now, 
As Gustavo said, there's going to be more ministers put into place after so many of them uh, had to leave after Morales left. Uh, but where do we go from here? Of course, it's going to be new elections at some point down the road. But how does Morales from here in Mexico City influence the unrest in Bolivia? Gustavo, I want to go back to you. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's happening in La Paz, specifically what's happening around you and where you are? So all day, uh, there's a city which is just uh, neighboring La Paz. It's called El Alto, and that has been a stronghold of Evo Morales. And today they came down. It's not too far. It's maybe 15 miles coming down the big hills that uh, these two cities are. And they flooded the streets, uh, the, one of the main streets, chanting against this, what they considered the coup. But they did so peacefully, mostly. There were a little bit of objects being thrown. The police maintained kept the perimeter. They did not respond violently or otherwise. We know that during the uh, afternoon, uh, evening, uh, early evening hours, there were a little clashes, uh, reports of vandalism, but so far the police are telling us nothing serious. So that part at least is under control here in La Paz. <laughs> there might be another cities that are not uh, reporting yet what's happening uh, or reaction to these cities. Now, the, the, the third question, or the third step to what we've been talking about, besides whether uh, Janine Agnes has the power to really be the interim president, is once the elections are called, who will the candidates be? The people are telling me they really don't like the other candidates that uh, were in this election. I'm Carlos Mesa, who finished second with about 30 percent, if we believe the, some of the results of the uh, Electoral College. Uh, people really don't like it. They tell me that they voted for him because they were really voting against Evo Morales. So that's the next step. Who are those leaders who are going to step up, drop their names in the hat so people can go and choose and see who is going to lead? Let's see who is the candidate that the pres that former President Morales has puts forward and see if he can actually advance. President Morales, many people tell me, they recognize that he changed the country. He just overstayed his welcome. So it could be possible that if they have a charismatic uh, candidate, that his party can return to power here in Bolivia. Gustavo Valdez in the Bolivian capital, La Paz, thank you very much. Uh, Matt Rivers in Mexico, thanks to both of you for your coverage. And as Gustavo was saying, the big question going forward, is there going to be another presidential election? It looks like it. When is it going to be? Who's going to run?